All right, today I'm going to show you all the different ways and options that are available to cover your cheeses while protecting them in the aging cave or refrigerator. The first most important step is to make sure that your cheese is completely dry to the touch. You want to have it, you know, just by itself after you make it in your, you know, 50 degree environment for 7 to 10 days, which is quite a while. And that's important because you don't want any extra moisture on the cheese or even within the first couple, you know, centimeters of your cheese. You want it completely dry. And that's really important because if not, none of these protective coatings will work very well at all. All right, so I'm going to go in order of the like least breathable to your cheese because the cheese is, cheese is a live organism, so it needs to breathe and you know to you know to propagate all the good bacteria and fungi and all the good organisms in your cheese. Ideally, it needs to breathe. Traditionally, cheeses were never put in plastic, you know, vacuum wrap. Um, so if you want to be traditional and get the best nutritional benefits from making cheese, um, that's probably going to be bandage wrapping. If you want the quickest way, it's going to be putting it in plastic wrap. So I'll show you all the different ways that are available. The first step that you need to know is you need to make sure your cheese is completely dry. And then once your cheese is dry, this option is called um, cheese wax and they call it but cheese wax but it's really just paraffin so paraffin is it's a petroleum byproduct yes not so good um, it's how a lot of cheese makers start they just simply cover their cheeses with this I like my best my favorite way to do it is put it in a crock pot put it on low wait for it to completely liquefy the whole thing liquid and then you take your cheese you dip it in halfway and then wait for it to dry, it takes a minute or two, and then flip it over, do the other one, and then you want to do this twice. So you want to have a double coating of cheese wax on your cheese. If you don't want to use cheese wax, which is paraffin, other option is um, beeswax, which is neat because it's natural. Um, it's not the best breathable um, surface, but um, it is natural, so that's great. At least it's not a petroleum byproduct. The bees make it, and it's very healthy. And I've noticed, even though beeswax does, you want to get unfiltered, or it would be filtered, but you want to get cheese wax that's not been adulterated, that's natural, you know, that hasn't been from bees that have been treated with anything. I put it in a crock pot, turn it on low, wait for it to be completely liquefied, and you do your cheese the same way as with um, your uh, cheese wax. One thing to keep in mind if you're doing cheese wax or beeswax, when you have your cheese in the aging refrigerator, you want to use a plastic mat. Um, this is a high quality plastic from a cheese making company and you want it on this because once you turn it twice a week it won't stick to this surface. If you have wax directly on wood, a lot of times it'll stick and when you flip it, it'll crack. And if you leave that crack, it gets mold in it um, and it messes up your cheese. You lose quite a bit of cheese um, when it cracks. And that's one of the reasons why I really don't like these two methods is because cheese, the cheese wax cracks on me all the time and then mold gets in there and it you know, it messes up quite a big part of your cheese that you have to cut off. All right, so the other, let's see, the next method is called um, vacuum packing. And this is just, um, you, I just use a food saver, but you can use any method that takes the oxygen out of the bag. You just put your cheese in there and then vacuum pack it on one end. This is a cheddar. And one thing to keep in mind, if you're vacuum packing, or using wax, you probably want to age your cheese an extra like month or two because it ages slower because it can't breathe. Um, okay, so I like this method because it's fast. So let's say I don't have any time and I don't want to do bandage wrapping. I don't want to melt my fat, cut my linens and do that whole process. I have to admit, I just put it in a vacuum pack. It's fast. And also the positive, one of the positives is why commercial cheesemakers use it is because mold and stuff can't get in there and 
there's no loss of moisture. So this is a very high yield. So you're not going to, you know, you put a four pound cheese in here, you're going to get a four pound of cheese out of it. And you're not going to have to cut any of the outside of this cheese off um, once you, once you want to eat it and serve it or sell it. So that's one option. I want to show you what happens if you don't let your cheese dry enough before you wrap it. You get this extra excess moisture that won't show up right away, but it shows up later, and you don't want that extra whey floating around in there. I'm going to have to repack, um, repack this cheese and redo it. So just make sure your cheese is very, very dry before you vacuum pack. Don't make a mistake that I did. All right, next step is called cream wax. And cream wax is pretty neat. It is breathable. Um, it's not natural, but it's better than cheese wax, and I would say it's probably better than beeswax. Um, cream wax is kind of like a glue. I guess it would, you'd probably look at it and think of Elmer's glue. Um, you put two coats of this. All you do is open it up, take some out, smear it on top. You have to wait for it to dry. It takes a little while. Flip it over you know, wax, you know, cream the top and the sides, let it dry, and you have to do it, you do two coats. And it looks like this at the end. It's a really nice looking cheese, and what's neat is it has a mold inhibitor in it, which means that you won't get any mold underneath this coating, which is awesome. And also it has a high yield because there's not a lot of coating on here, and you won't have any mold that you'll have to cut off and the other good benefit is your cheese can breathe in this coating more than it can those other two methods I've showed you. Oh, and in the aging refrigerator, this is very easy. You could put this directly on wood. You could put this on your bamboo mats. It doesn't matter. It won't stick. This stuff won't come off. It's, it's a very nice surface. All right. <laughs> what do you think, Isabella? What is this? You like cheese, don't you? Wow. Yeah? What's your favorite method? You like bandage wrapping, don't you? All right, the last method I'm going to show you is called bandage wrapping. And what I do is, <laughs> this is pretty neat. You need to use whatever fat you have available that's cheapest to you. So, um, you can use lard, you can use tallow, you can use butter. But for me, the cheapest fat is tallow and it's pretty much almost free because when you buy a whole cow or a half cow we get our cow processed I ask them to save all the fat and grind it up into chili grind and then they vacuum pack it into huge bulk fat and then I take that fat put it in the crock pot or put it in the oven on a very low temperature let it cook all day and it turns into this beautiful liquid fat and um, then what I do is I take this and I freeze it. So I have like, I don't know, 50 quarts of this stuff. Yeah, I have like 50, 40 or 50 quarts of this beautiful fat in my freezer because that's just what I have available to me. But it's a good quality fat that's from grass-fed cows. And as you can see, it's a really pretty yellow color. So use what fat you have that's cheapest because fat would be expensive. Um, but the neat thing about this is using using tallow is very, or using lard, is very traditional to covering cheeses. It also allows a breathable surface for your cheese. It allows, what's neat is the molds grow on and eat the fat instead of eating your cheese. So you'll have all this beautiful mold that covers your cheese and grows and it also attributes some really neat flavors to your cheese. So when you see like cloth bound cheddar, um, you know, they're called reserve cheddar, or they also charge a lot of money for them. They're usually cloth-bound cheeses. So I'm going to show you how I do my cloth-bound cheese. The first thing I do is I take my quart out of the freezer, let it come to room temperature, and then um, I take a pot of water, and I put a cloth in the bottom, and that's so this isn't touching the bottom of the pot. And then this is important, I turn the stove on low, very low, because you don't want to burn the cloth and you don't want to burst your jar. So I just put it in here, it probably takes an hour, but I have it on low, or maybe half an hour. And you wait for this fat to be completely liquefied. So that's simple, not too much work. I cut four pieces of cheesecloth 
into squares. And they are not perfect, but they will cover the cheese great. And the way to know how to do it is take your square and you want it to kind of come down to the middle of the cheese on most of the sides. Sometimes it'll overlap, that's fine. Also, I put down some parchment paper because it's um, the fat kind of gets everywhere, so it's nice to be able to just take your cheese wax. Yeah, that's right. It's nice to just be able to take your cheese wax paper and um, you know throw it away at the end of the day, and it also helps create a much cleaner surface to work on. Okay, so then what I do is I take the melted wax out. Um, if you have on your cheese, if you have any mold that's formed, you want to take some water, vin water that's been treated with a little bit of vinegar and salt and rub off any, like, if any white kind of mold forms on here, make sure you get that off and then dry it off. I just stick my fingers in and I rub the cheese with this beautiful oil. You like tallow, don't you, Isabella? Cheese. Yeah, cheese. You like cheese. Her favorite thing is cheese curds. <laughs> All right, so then put it down. Here's your cheesecloth. Some people just put it directly on there. I like to get some fat on it, so I just put it in there. Take the wax off. You're a good helper, Isabel. Put it on top, and then you just, um, I press down all the sides. And this works the same if you're using lard or if you're using butter. So set it down on the side you haven't done. Put another square in. You squeeze off the extra fat. Just open it up, set it down. There's no, you can't do this wrong. You want it to be flat on your cheese and not have any gaps, so that's why you're trying to push it down really even. You don't want to have any like air gaps. So you just go around your cheese just like this. Alright, so you want to do two layers of cheesecloth. So we've done one, and you always want to alternate. So see, this, this is the last one we did. This is the first one, so I'm going to put it on this side. Set it in the middle again. Pull it straight. And just push it down. And again, the neat thing about bandage wrapping, it is a little bit more work, but it's very traditional. It allows your cheese to breathe. It's a natural way to cover your cheese. It also makes your cheese, it'll help your cheese taste incredible because the molds that form on the outside, um, I don't know, they impart some kind of neat flavor to the cheese. Your cheese will also be a little bit drier when you um, bandage wrap. All right, here's a trick I learned from someone else um, on the, how to label your cheese. Because I've tried to write with marker on here once it's dry, but it ruins your permanent markers because of the fat. So all I do is take, um, you could take a piece of paper, I take um, just an, a sticky label, um, just one of those address labels. Write the name of the cheese. You definitely want the day that you made it. You also want to put um, when the first date is that you can consume the cheese which um, 60 days is the minimum um, for a hard cheese, so two months. So I put, you know, the month and the day on there. And then up to 12 months, or you could even do 24 months if you're making really good, you know, cheese, you want to age it a really, really long time. So anywhere from two months to 12 months is when you can eat this cheese. So what I do is I just stick it on there, and then I take a little bit of fat, and I just rub the fat on. And once this dries, it's, it has a really nice stick to it. It'll stick really well. And you'll be really glad that you have this label because you'll have, you might have several cheeses in there and you have no idea when they're ready. Um, and also, you know, what kind of cheese it is. So there you go. That's a neat way, to, one option on how you can label your cheeses.